the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I want to go ahead and give you a quick uh, uh, synopsis of what we talked about today. And I, and I, I changed the topic because I've started off with the kind of topic called to be two types of churches, the those that obey Christ and those that disobey Christ. And I changed it more to line up with the scriptures so that people, if they're going to discuss it and debate it, they can at least line up with what scripture I'm coming from. And I'm coming from Romans chapter 8. I'm talking about verse 6. We're talking about being being caught in the mind of spiritual light. So this is what I want to do, and and because what I've seen so much, and I think most of them agree now, we have become so comfortable. You know, I can't say we have, because I see based on history that we have done card we've been acting on the cardinal flesh and cardinal reality for a very long time. But it's called two types of Christians, spiritual mind and cardinal mind. That verse that goes to that is Romans 8, 6. So when you talk to your pastor and you talk to your minister, you talk to your fellow believers, you ask you, you what I want you to do is assess whether you are cardinal. Are you cardinal Christians? And then what I do encourage you to do, what we talked about today was Google, go do word search, go to the library, have you want to say, look up the atrocities first of religion, religious people or religion and how much religion has uh, driven people to do mass killing and murders and torture and some very inhumane things. And then if you want to talk about the, the, the our Christianity itself, then you go and look up look up the atrocities of Christians and you'll see that we, we got to, and you know it, starting from the crusade all the way to the transatlantic slave trade, all the way to the slavery all the way through the Jim Crow laws and all those things and all the way to this day we see where people have dehumanized people to justify the behavior. Now we're seeing it even between political parties where somebody is sitting there just because you're part of this party uh, we're going to hurt you, we're going to kill you, we're going to dehumanize you. Both sides to a degree but one side in particular is really putting down uh, a lot of rhetoric of talking about physically hurting somebody. Uh, even in Christianity, we talked about the fact that the evangelicals and so forth talking about abortion with the with the the inciting people to go blow up abortion clinics and and then put uh, pregnant women or women who commit abo ador uh, abortion put them in jail. You know, it, it's just a lot of things that people would do in the name of their faith, their religion, and in our case, Christianity. So we need to fit there and say, do we need to operate and try to deal with things from the cardinal level or from the spiritual level? You know, God is the spirit in John 4, 24. God is the spirit, and those who worship him must worship his spirit in truth. And we've been called to preach the good news, not be militant. And we talked about the fact is that even uh, Christianity did not start off, nor is it nor are the teachings of Christ about violence. But when Rome took over and the church was accepted as the same religion, it became a banner also to be more militant. And that's where the crusade came in. And the viciousness and the, the, the terrible thing that was done in the crusade, look it up and read it for yourself. We, as believers, we, it's time for us to let our light shine and show people who are the real Christians. Meaning, and I'm talking about spiritual Christians. We have spiritual-minded Christians, not cardinal-minded. So real quick, I want to go ahead and read the, uh, the scripture I'm coming from, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and get into the study. So right here, like I said, two types of Christians, spiritual-minded and cardinal-minded, coming from Romans 8, 6. But let's go ahead into those scriptures. I want to read it real quick. Uh, it's like this. Romans 1, 8, I mean, Romans 8, 1, all the way to 8, 6 is what I like to read as, as the foundation where I'm coming from. He said, there therefore no condemnation in them which are in Christ Jesus walking after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and it was weak to the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, listen y'all, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the date on the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. But if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Now, what I'm trying to say, if you look at what we just read, and you go back and read it for yourself, all the things from the lynching, all the things from the slave trade, all the things from the crusade, all the things leading them to the day. If you call yourself a Christian, if you use any cardinal weapons, any fleshly tools to try to make somebody be a Christian, to try to make somebody line up to be righteous, to make somebody to be what you think they're supposed to be as far as being holy, you can't do it because cardinal tools does not make you holy. Is only the spirit, the righteousness of Christ that's given to you as a gift. And if it's given to you as a gift, and the only thing for other people to do is receive the gift or continue to be what they are. But you are not cardinal. Remember that, amen? I hope you enjoyed the study. And then listen to these introductions more than anything else because that's what we're trying to come to. Let's stop being cardinal Christians and let's stop being spiritual Christians. Amen? God bless you. God loves you. I will go ahead and make the, uh, the session available next, buy them up in uh, A, B, and C, and D. And also, I'll go ahead and make sure that you uh, get these out as soon as possible for you can digest them one day at a time or every other day. And also, remember this, subscribe. And, and make comments, too. I'll receive them. I, I mean, at least I'll, I'll read them. <laughs> God bless you. Take care. That's what he was talking about over here. We got here, we're talking about the crusade uh, in the Roman Empire. And they're right, <laughs> they're right here. <clears throat> Chief Christ talked about love, bigotry, racism, talk about hate, killing. Hey, look, not only, look at, look, let me make sure you got it. Let me make sure everybody got this. Not only did it, 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 it talked about uh, hate and killing, it talked about adultery. It, it, it said, it, it is, it's almost as if you have a, you have a blank check to do the things I told you, that God told you not to do. You, you, you suspend it the Ten Commandments based on dehumanizing people and you call yourself a Christian. And we talk about the even today. Many of us could they talk about being politics. Many of us have taken the license or the teaching of Christ when it comes to politics out of it. Say a politics is is greater than let me come off this here my politics trumps teaching of Christ my racism trumps the teaching of Christ my nationality trumps the teaching of Christ <clears throat> it looking so bad my political party trumps the constitution because once you start wavering on one set of standards, it makes it easier to do that on other sets of standards too, doesn't it? It's easy for you to sit there and ignore the Constitution 
because it was done when you did a lot of the lynching, right? A lot of the lynching, you had law enforcement people with you. Black Wall Street, you had the military come in and the military did not come to, to uh, help the black people. <laughs> they they shot at the, the, the black people too. And yet, law and order? Come on. I'm asking you, if you listen long enough, if, I don't know, hopefully I can get you a five minute, two minute, one minute, one second of sitting there saying this, check yourself. Because you're going to all give account to one another. We're all going to give account to God individually. Most of you, most people, I think, forgot about the fact is that you will give an account to God. And, and I think that's that's the tragedy of it. We don't, we told people to sit there and say that they actually should do the things that they do. And we convinced many people to come, come into the body of Christ and then tell them, you know, it's okay for you to hate those, uh, look, look, modern day black her. It's okay to hate those uh, liberals. It, and then, you know, try to, then I guess you get the reversal of the, the uh, I guess the liberals saying it's okay to hate the conservatives who are not conservative, but operate something different than conservatism. It's okay to hate somebody because of the color of skin. It's okay to hate somebody because they're an immigrant. It's okay to hate somebody because of their sexual orientation. Just, you just, you, you, you just, it's okay to, to dismiss all the teaching of Christ. Just dismiss it. Because you 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 know the Bible says you said at one point it's at all points. So, but you basically saying is that in this zone, you can go outside the will of God, you can go outside the Ten Commandments, you can go outside the teaching of Christ. In this zone, you created a zone. And then you think that that zone has been ordained by God. That's that is what I'm concerned with for most of you. I'm talking about your eternal soul. You have created a zone where you personally, individually, because every individual, every last one of you, me as well, we were given account to God. Hey, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can go to your pastor and you can go to your priest. You can go to somebody else. You can go to somebody else that, that, that got papers and said, I got a theological degree and everything else and sit there and say that pastor. Those people can say, you in this, you can create the zone where you can do what you want to do. You can disregard loving one another. You can disregard forgiving one another. You can disregard hating one another. In this zone, this is a zone that you this I, you have created. There's man has created a zone for you. And I'm telling you, there is no zone to go against the will of God. That's what's more important for me, for you to understand. And that's what people have been turned off and, and, and don't want to deal with Christianity in that sense because you're hypocrites. When you sit there and, and endorse bad behavior, when you sit there and say it's okay to do wrong things to people, you're not operating, in, you're not being ambassador to Christ, you've been ambassador to the devil. No one just call it what it is. And some of you say, I don't believe in the devil. That's the problem is, you don't believe in the devil, you don't believe in Christ. You don't believe in God. But if you do believe in God, if you do believe in Christ, if you do believe in the teaching of the Holy Spirit, then you denounce hatred, bigotry, stereotyping, political party differences. You denounce those things where you have to act in a, behavior, in, a, in a way of behavior that's contrary to the teaching of Christ. That's all I'm trying to say. We, we don't make this thing so political and don't understand your politic will take you to hell because you're not following Christ. You're following man. There is no excuse for adultery. There is no excuse for killing. There is no excuse for hatred. There is no excuse for sedition. There's no excuse for that. 
And you know it. You know, you personally know it. If somewhere you think that you have a bubble that allows you to do bad things because you've been taught, many people have been taught since 313 AD to do the things contrary to the teaching. Let's call it for what it is. Let's call it for what it is. You have allowed the teaching of man to trump teaching Christ. You examine it for yourself. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, you're not following the teaching of Christ. And he said, forgive. And that's what we're going to talk about. You know, and, 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 and that's why I think it's so important for us to, to really examine ourselves. Not to condemn yourself, but to adjust, to line up with the will of the Father instead of the will of man. Because the will of man is not going to guarantee eternal life. The will of man may guarantee, may guarantee some of you uh, personal wealth while you're alive. And if, 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 if the only thing you, if that's all that you care about, then do it. Because there's a lot of people that kill people. There's people that kill people for a dime. Much less people that kill people for billions and billions of dollars. Because that's that's their their whole they have already accepted that is here and now that matters. Not 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 eternal life. And if you made it determined that eternal life is not important, then then I I uh I will I, I then go ahead and do it. Because you you are you are made and you go ahead and teach your children that it doesn't matter. Is only the here and now, because you 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 have already made that decision that eternal life is not a higher priority than living in this day and time. So you have already allowed yourself and determined that the destination of your soul. So you know. Do like my buddy was talking about. He's saying, in fact, if you don't know. You don't know there's a uh, uh, there's heaven or hell. You don't know that. You don't personally know that. So, so therefore, stop trying to put that on us and put that guilt trip on. And if that's your position too, as somebody who professed to be a Christ, Christian, if it's your position is I don't know. I don't. You, I don't mean I, I have no faith in the gospel concerning hell or heaven. I have no faith in that. I have no faith in eternal life. Then, then go ahead and do what you're going to do because you already condemned already. You already gave up your eternal life because you decided it's better to hate than to love. To forgive. You decided it's better to not forgive than to forgive. You decided to, take, you decided to just kick all of the doctrine of Christianity, teaching of Christianity, because you got to take it all anyway. So you decided that some force in Christianity teaching you you don't you don't care about. So cause that way I can't I can't say I can't I can't do what I the history and the, the atrocities that have been occurred from from generation to generation, you know, especially even in this country, right? You 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 the justification to enslave people was to tell them they're not Christians, to tell them that they're not human you 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 created a a narrative to justify you not doing the teaching of Christ you think by saying that somebody's property that that God is gonna look at you and say that you know it was it was, it was okay for you to do that to them because they were property it was it was okay for you to kill them it was okay for you to rape them because many you did rape them it was cases, you know, it was okay for you even to, to, to solidify someone. Because that's what someone did, right? It was, not, it was just not just the females being raped. It was men being raped. Huh? 
but you but you know the, it, it was okay right because you you dehumanized them oh look look modern day vernaculars they're criminals they're inferior oh because they're inferior now we can act even we can do anything to an inferior person right that's the teaching that's the teaching of the world right that trumps the teaching of god right you know god created man right in his own image but you 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 said hey man we can we can go ahead and make these people inferior to us just based on the color of our skin and we can do anything we want to them we can hate them we can we can do bad things to them because that that's in the that's in the what's well, our human zone and God will overlook every last one of them. Like God is going to overlook your racism. God is going to overlook your prejudice. God is going to overlook your, your adultery. God is going to overlook your fornication and everything else. God is going to overlook all that thing. He's just going to overlook it. You, you, you going, you going to, when you take your nap and close your eyes for the final time, you're going to be able to sit there and say, God, I'm here. Let me in the gate. And you, what you hate to see for yourself and for your children. Because I think we need to get to the point of the fact that what is the main thing? What's the main focus? Eternal life. My friends say you, you don't know the eternal life. So if you either, you can take a position what he takes is that you don't, since you don't know there's eternal life or not, therefore you can just do what you want to do. Or you're going to take the position that I know there's eternal life, but I I decided to go to eternal death. Or I determined to go eternal life. And if I go to eternal life, then I I can't make property a human being a property, human being a savage, human being a criminal, and treat them the any way I want to, because that's not the teaching of Christ. That's that's really what I'm trying to say. So just to make sure we, and we go ahead and do this moving forward and just let the scripture speak for itself. Uh, because if, if, like I said, if you don't, if you take the position you, that it's okay to do things to sinners, or to person color, color skin or, or where they came from, if that's your position, then you can do whatever you want to do. You fall in one of these categories here, right? Two types of Christians. Those who obey Christ and those who disobey Christ. So are you a dis are you disobeying Christ for your benefit, for your political benefit, for your financial benefit, for the racism, nationalism, political party? If you if you're doing, if you're doing all of those things for To ignore, to do all the things to ignore Christ by using the positions of man. You have made your decision and you made your children's decision. And that's not going to change, right? You you just go ahead and I, I think you should just do what you're doing because when it's over with, it's over with. And whatever condition you're in when you leave, that's the condition you leave. And you can, you can have hope and faith in your position, your cardinal position, your political position, your uh, racist position, any of those positions that you want to feel comfortable with that, then then you go with it. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm just trying to figure, why are you calling yourself a Christian? What is the purpose of calling yourself a Christian if you're not going to do what Christ said you to do? I'm talking about the, the, the what you got a book, <laughs> you got a gospel, you 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 have a New Testament, you have an Old Testament. You have the you call yourself a Christian. If you call yourself a Christian, you call yourself going the way. You know, it's interesting when they used to call the uh, early Christian was not called Christian; they were called the way, right? What Christ said, I'm the way for John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes and follow but by me. That's that was Christ telling all of us. I am the way. 
see, my political party is not the way. My racist attitude is not the way. My my disobey, disobeying the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments really not, uh, when you think about it, Carlotta would sit there and try to say, you try to make, look, the Ten Commandments is, is we listen to it. First, first part of the Ten Commandments is, is talking about the relationship between you and God. Got it. Then we get into the rest, right? The six days, Sabbath day rest, right? Right. We all rest. You rest, or you can rest on the Pacific seventh day of Sabbath, or you can rest sometimes throughout the week, right? Because we got a 20, this world, this country, this, this country anyway, goes 24 7. And if it goes 24 7, that means somebody got to work. So therefore, we're not going to stone somebody because they're working. Not, not based on how this society operates 24 7. You know, I guarantee you, you, you get some people don't work uh, on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, you, you go sit there and say, no, I need the police to be working. I need the fire department to be working. I need the lights to keep burning. I need, you know, a lot of that. I need the grocery store to be open. I need the restaurants to be open, you know, all the things like that. But it was made for us, not us made for it. But that's a, that's another story by itself. But could you go ahead we, with your bad self? But I hope that you do more than just the Sabbath. I hope you do all of the commandments, right? Honor your father and mother, right? And and then thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not bear false witness. Those are not bad things. I, I, I'd rather be around a person who don't kill. I'd rather be around a person who don't lie. I'd rather be around a person who don't commit adultery. I'd rather be around people who don't cover my stuff to the point they take it. You know what I mean? What type of church are you? I want to sit there and invite you to listen to this study carefully. And I also want to invite you to look up the history of religion. And I'm talking about look at the atrocities of religion. Look at the atrocity of the Christian church. Look them up because there's a lot. And why I'm saying that, the Bible says that a tree is known by its fruit. What fruit are you bearing? That's what we want to discuss. And, and keep in mind, you can always change, revert back, repent, and follow the will of God. So even if you have a history of bad things, you can always come back to the throne of grace because that's what that gospel is about. So I want you to take time, listen to the study, analyze it for yourself, and ask what type of church are you. We got to the point where we had to use, went to the book of Revelation to the church of Laodicea and what that church was like. And the question is, are you like that, church? But if you believe and want to believe, follow his will. He gave you the Lord, he gave you the Lord's commandments so you can follow his will daily. Amen. All right. God bless you. I see you. Don't forget to subscribe. And and I will break these down into segments A, B, C, D, and whatever it takes to finish it up. But I just want you to analyze. And like I said, I just want to put out there to you. If you decide that you don't want to believe Christ, if you decide that you don't believe in eternal life, that's a choice you make. And we respect your choice because you make that choice. All we all tell you is that everyone will give, every, look, my scripture said by faith. That's all I can go by faith in his word. Is that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. So, you can say it now or say it when you leave this world. That's up to you. God bless you, but I chose to do it now. Make that decision now. And I encourage everybody else to make that decision now as well. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed the segment, the study that we did this Sunday on the 9th of July. And say, look, yes, sure, Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen. God bless you. I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.